Thank you, thank you. Thank you for making the trip out here. Happy to. It's always fun to be on stage and talk to end users. Well, we have a lot of exciting announcements today with Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. Um, we thought it would be a good opportunity to have someone that's been part of the Kubernetes open source community since the beginning, is a leader in the Kubernetes open source community, and has done a tremendous amount to make it what it is today. You want to talk a little bit about the, open, the community and the progress? I'm happy to. So Kubernetes uh, began as a partnership with Google and Red Hat and Samsung and CoreOS and a number of other companies who all wanted to take the vision of container management that Google had internally and make it open source, make it possible for everyone. And this was announced in summer of 2015 with an intent that it was going to be a community-governed project. But any project that begins with a heavy contribution base from a single company has some challenges moving um, to be com completely community-led. And so we've spent the last two years working very hard to distribute our decision-making down to the developers who are building the specific components of Kubernetes, as well as building a cross-community governance system, um, which just got elected last Thursday, which is super exciting. And we'll begin the, the hard work of making a broader governance structure for the project. Um, but a lot of this work happens from the grassroots, like Kubo. I found out about this um, now, the container runtime system, the Cloud Foundry container runtime. Um, I found out about this uh, as a happenstance sort of thing. Even though the work was being done inside Google, it was a fair, fair way underway before I had heard about it because so much of this work comes up from the grassroots. And it's amazing how it's driven by both people in the community as well as the users. The end users are driving a lot of this innovation. There's a, a lot of momentum in the Kubernetes open source community. Um, how many of you have heard of Kubernetes before here? Nobody, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. It's, um, it's all the rage now. That's all what the cool I've heard. kids are doing it. But here's the thing. All the cool kids may be doing it, but it doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of workloads and tools that are still very important. Your uh, metaphor of, er, and talk about railroad was fascinating to me because the early days of the railroad had some really crazy in, um, incompatibilities, as in the rail gauges were different. And so one of the best parts about open source, and we've done this through, for example, the Open Service Broker API, um, um, one of the best parts about open source is that we can find those intersection points, those um, the surface uh, connection points where the different projects work together and try to find ways to make it so that you don't have to climb off of one train and climb onto the next because my rail gauge is different from your rail gauge. So we've done a lot of that work right now, and I, I keep seeing all the great opportunities ahead of us to do more. So I'm super excited about the um, Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes being able to run together in a way that benefits end users. Yeah, and you touched on the Open Service Broker API, which um, I neglected to mention earlier. That's OK. I got you covered. Thank you. That's why I brought you here to remind me all the things I'm going to forget today. But uh, that's actually such an exciting project, and it really links together Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, mm -hmm. but also the services in a new and real way. And there's a tremendous amount of work going on around this now, um, beyond just the Open Service Broker API, but with projects like Envoy and Istio, which just released uh, V2 2 this week. Yeah. Or sorry, 0.2. 0.2. Thank you. <laughs> Important distinction. But you know, it's. You know, the point of all of that is there's an amazing amount of momentum with each of these small projects, but the open source and the collaborative potential is massive. And I'm just so thrilled about the opportunity to work closer with the Kubernetes community and Cloud Native Computing Foundation on all of these projects. 
Yeah, the Open Service Broker API has turned into a service catalog subgroup inside, not turned into, we have spawned a service catalog subgroup inside Kubernetes that is working to a space where we can um, allow a nice clean edge area that more and more people, more and more developers can work within our ecosystem without having to be completely embedded in all of the inside baseball that exists inside the Kubernetes development or inside uh, Cloud Foundry development. Exactly, and so the vision is to make those services portable across all of them. Yes. So a true platform agnostic capability for services, which honestly has so much potential to drive and accelerate the ecosystem around all of these projects. And it's all happening in the open source. It is. Although the Open Service Broker API came out of Cloud Foundry, so we get to say thank you for that. I, I, was, I wasn't going to bring it up, but yeah. But you should. We get to say thanks. It's all good. <laughs> well, you're, I'm just so excited. Um, you know, as we think about the future, though, which is, you know, is really bright, as we think about these different communities and the different open source initiatives going on, where do you see the future going? Where do you see a lot of the, the biggest potential areas? So I have been a, um, maybe not even closet, I was going to say closeted evangelist of utility computing for five years or more, but I'm not that closeted anymore. Um, I, I see a space where we have developers building what they need, what their companies need, using the tools they need, and we get past the, the religious um, debates of past years, the you have to use our platform locked into our platform in, in one way or another. And instead, we find a much more composable system. So Cloud Foundry, Bosch can run Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry application. It's the next word, application. Runtime. Thank you. Application runtime, the container runtime and the uh, application runtime. Or you can run Kubernetes on top of uh, OpenStack and Azure and Cl Google Cloud Platform in order to have the resilience your, your company or your product or your application needs. But just making, these, making the multiple tool sets fit what the developers and end customers need as opposed to uh, making the end customers fit what the platforms wanted. So providing users choice. Crazy talk. Who does that? Portability, user choice. It's like containers. We're on a, we're on a theme here with containers and that. portability. Um, I just, uh, there's so much potential and so much excitement. So as we, we think about the future, we think about the power of open source, um, you know, I think when I think about Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry, I think a lot of peanut butter and chocolate. While they're both great separately, together they're amazing. Um, I've, I've found that that doesn't always translate to Europe because they don't. A lot of them don't like peanut butter. Oh, that's a good point. It's a very American thing. There was a there was a series of um, commercials in TV where somebody would put peanut butter and chocolate and chocolate and peanut butter, and there was a big drama. But they taste great together. They do taste great. <laughs> so if you haven't tried it, highly recommend it. Unless you have a nut allergy, then maybe not. Um, one thing that as we wrap this up, as we think about the future, and particularly talking to uh, a group of the open source community here at Cloud Foundry, I'd say we'd leave it with the open call to action. Get involved. Be part of each of these projects. Be part cross -pollinate. of the- Cross-pollinate. Cross-pollinate, yes. If you want to work with Kubernetes, come join us. OK, not exclusively, but that's fine. Come talk with us at least. <laughs> if, you, if you are working in a different open source community, share the ideas that you see and meet you know, when you go out to these events and cross-pollinate. It's a huge, huge help. And there's so many projects that are spinning off that I, I'm, just, I'm just so excited about the next 12 months. The future is always bright. Especially now. Well, thank you, Sarah, <laughs> for joining us here at Cloud Foundry Summit in Basel. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate you coming by. Yeah. Always happy to. Thank you.